Tonight's meeting will be held in this, the following ma manner, but before we begin, I have a, just a, little, a few little comments. So I've gotten some feedback from people in the community as to our approvals and disapprovals on petitioners, um, what do I call these? Variance applications, okay, yeah, I should know that. Uh, we, this board, I believe, is a very relaxed board in comparison to other communities, which is a good thing for all of you, and it's also a good thing for us. However, um, we need to really look closely at Massachusetts General Laws 40A, which is what the Zoning Board of Appeals upholds. So I suggest that petitioners, lawyers, contractors, take a closer look at hardships and what hardships are in regards to Massachusetts General Law 40A, because in reality, you are here for a variance because of a hardship. Now, I could go on and on on this, uh, people that know me, I could do a, an entire hour on what's going on, what's not going on, what a hardship is, what it shouldn't be. That's not my, my position right now. I just wanted to let everybody know that in reality, this is one of the fairest boards on issuing variances. But I am pleading with you at this point in time this month and from this point forward to take a close look at what exactly a hardship is. And it's clearly stated in our laws. That being said, this is how the meeting will be conducted this evening. The secretary will read all our legal notices or state that such a notice has been waived. All applications tonight will be heard in the order that they were received in the city clerk's office, so we are following our agenda as written. The petitioner or petitioner's representative will present the subject application to the board. So if you are number six or number one and uh, we read your application, you then come up to the podium and you state your name and address clearly for the record. And then you or your lawyer or your contractor tells us why you're here, what you want. We will ask you questions. Um, I then will say, is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak in favor? Your neighbors, whomever, can come up and speak in favor. They also have to say their name and address for the record. I then ask, is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak in opposition? And here's where it gets a little tricky, because if you are here in op opposition for whatever your neighbor wants to do, please state pertinent reasons. You are here for dimensional relief. I do not want to, and I say this every time, and people are getting sick of hearing, but it's true. Every, every month, uh, somebody comes up and they speak to the, to the manner at which their neighbor lives, leaves on the that fall on your, in your pool from their tree has nothing to do with the zoning board. Loud music being played till 3 a.m. has nothing to do with the zoning board. I not, we, won't, we won't hear it. This is what you'll get, and you have to stop. If, in fact, we have 20 people in opposition, 20 neighbors, and, and the first 15 have something different to say, that's fine, that's great, and the last five want to repeat it, please don't repeat it. State your name and address for the record. You'll get credit for it and just say, I agree with all my other neighbors, okay? Um, at that point, your lawyer or yourself can come back to the podium and address any of the issues that you, that you can. The best way to get this done, and anyone out there listening, please take heed, is to talk to your neighbors before you get here. That makes everything run smoother. Okay, and after that, we might have a few other questions. We take a vote, either it goes through or it doesn't, and at that point, 
The decision is typed and filed with the city clerk. Once the decision is filed with the city clerk, you have a 20-day appeal period. So you have to wait 20 days before you can do anything. Oh, and one other thing. Once you're done talking and we're all set, do not talk from your seat. I'll send you to the principal's office. You can't, you know, you don't raise your hand, don't shout out, just please don't do that. It's just, it's not acceptable. So we type it, you have a 20-day appeal period. In compliance with the open meeting law, this hearing is also being recorded stenographically by a clerk, and we are on TV now. When you come up to the podium, turn it on, and please speak directly into the microphone clearly. And once again, only speak when you are at the podium to make sure you are on record. So this evening, number one is a continued matter. And who is presenting that? Attorney Kelty. Do we need the clerk or someone to read anything in, or good to go? Good. Uh, thank you. This is a uh, matter. I'm, I'm John Kelty. I'm an attorney. I have offices at 40 Lowell Street here in Peabody, Massachusetts. I'm appearing on behalf of Youssef, uh, who has, uh, who owns the property at 357 um, Andover Street in, here in Peabody, Massachusetts. It's 1357. And we have, um, we were here a year and a half ago, two years. Um, we were denied a uh, special permit. We were denied the variance that uh, we sought. We took an appeal. Uh, we have uh, filed a motion for remand. The matter has been remanded back to the city. In the meantime, we have uh, taken the opportunity to um, meet with Public Services Director, now uh, David Terenzoni. We've met with uh, Captain Scott Richards from the PBD uh, Police Department, and what we have discussed is uh, turning a section of North of North Central Street, which is currently one way being entry only, and we are uh, proposing to turn that into two-way uh, traffic uh, so that from a point where uh, we have Pound Lane, that that would be two-way from, uh, from Pulaski Street into and out of uh, North Central Street uh, to its intersection with Pound Lane. Pound Lane, uh, to orient you, goes from 114 just after our property and just before the uh, uh, bridge, uh, the railroad bridge, and it uh, heads one way only, which is inward, crosses over North Central, and then uh, it comes out at the light up at uh, the intersection of Margin and uh, uh, Margin and Pulaski Street. So. Gardner, I'm sorry, I said margin. Uh, Gardner and Pulaski Street. So we're hopeful that um, we have had this vetted by uh, the Public Services Department and the Police Department. They have uh, provided letters um, saying they're supportive of that two-way traffic. So if the board were to um, grant this variance, it should be subject to the City Council and um, the various departments uh, allowing this to become uh, two-way. We've also had um, this section, we've also had uh, this issue um, vetted by Public Services Department with respect to the uh, grant money that is going to be um, provided uh, to the City of Peabody in some uh, future date, uh, which is going to be the uh, major improvements to um, major improvements to Andover Street.
It depicts the current uh, traffic flow and the current condition. And then the second sheet um, actually shows us uh, utilizing that section of North Central Street as two-way. And then we've reduced the number of curb cuts. That was um, of particular interest to uh, World Tech, the other people undertaking the improvements uh, on behalf of the city of Peabody to North Central, uh, um, to Central Street, and they were particularly happy to see the limitation on the number of curb cuts uh, from what currently exists. Uh, it's kind of an open, um, open campus, if you will, uh, and we're gonna limit them to a single uh, right turn only, exiting, and uh, entry only that shows on our second sheet. So we've made significant, uh, significant improvements and we would hope that the board would consider. I do have uh, larger uh, chalks if the board would like to see them, but I think that we've presented this material in the past and that would be it. So this looks great, but what, what's this? That is actually uh, land not owned by my client, oh. uh, and it's land owned by the city of Peabody. And we have had some discussions about, you know, perhaps landscaping it or putting some signage out there, if that's an area that um, that uh, the city would like to see us uh, help them with improving it. So I didn't go by there today. Refresh my memory. What is it, though? What is it? What is what? What is that little piece of what? What is it? Is it concrete? Is it grass? Is it nothing? Uh, right now it's grass. Oh, it's grass. Right now it's grass and it has a uh, transformer on it. Yeah, some valve chambers. Yeah, and some valve chambers. But it's uh, city of Peabody property and we're more than willing. We In our discussions with uh, Mr. Terran Zoning, we had said that if there was some kind of improvement. We're showing landscape um, adjacent to that piece of land, but um, it's, uh, it's on our property. You mentioned uh, having the support of uh, various departments in the city, having spoken to them. Do we have anything in the file? Did this letter get sent over? No. Well, that's an April 10th letter from, um, from David Terenzoni uh, indicating his support. I thought that I had sent that. But... Sure. Um, <clears throat> April 10th letter uh, to the zoning board, dear members of the board, I've reviewed the plan prepared by Engineering Alliance entitled Site Layout Plan Sheet 2 of 2 dated October 23, 2015, revised through April 4, 2018. The design contemplates changing North Central Street from a one-way street to a two-way street from Pulaski Street to the proposed site driveway for one Andover. The plans have been revised to include a right turn only and no left turn graphic per my request. Based on my review, the Department of Public Works supports the proposed design. In addition, the design does not appear to have any impact on the Central Street Roadway Improvement Project which is currently being designed by World Tech. Please feel free to contact me with any questions, and that's David Terenzoni, PLS Director. I only have one comment. I uh, originally was not too keen on this project, but in actuality, it um, beautifies the area. It, you have done a wonderful job listening to us and revamping it, and um, I think that it will only improve that entire area. And thank you very much. Through the chair, if I could. Uh, Jack, I, I asked you at the last meeting about World Tech, and um, from everything I hear, everything's gonna be fine, but 
Who have you, t I mean, have you been working with them and every the everybody's happy with what you're doing as opposed to not with being With the, the Department of Public Services, yeah, the with police, the, with the car the community project. development, yes. Okay. Anybody in the audience to speak in favor? Anybody in the audience to, to speak in opposition? Second. I'll make a motion to approve. Um, and I guess I look to the board to see if we want to make that conditional upon uh, a final approval of the two-way, making that a two-way street here. Uh, so we will make that a condition of it, that North Central Street uh, must be made a two-way, uh, ending at Pulaski, ending at Pound Lane, and it'll be two-way from Pound Lane down North Central to Pulaski Street. And uh, just to make sure the record is clear, since this was initially a 2015 uh, petition and application, uh, you've requested um, a one foot of proposed frontage for building one, three feet for proposed building two, a 22 and a half foot rear yard setback. Uh, and just to the, to the extent that any zoning may have changed in the last two years with respect to any kind of rear yard setback or any of the front yard setbacks with respect to this particular application, uh, those will just, those may or may not be null and void at this point. Um, the relief that we've sought works today. It does work today. Yes. Okay, just wanted that on the records. It's just been about two years. Do I hear a second? Before we second that, um, Stephen, the two way, does that begin where Pound Lane intersects with North Central, or is the two way uh, stop at where the in egress, and in in ingress and egress to the parking lot is? It does go to Pond Lane. Okay. Yep. Then I can, I'll second that motion. Okay. Thank you. Roll call vote, please. Yes. 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 Kevin? Stephen? Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. Two, we have a continued application of John Goulis, Valerie Goulis, and Cynthia Parianos. Ready to go? All right, just for the record, my name's Aethan Bonsalitas. I'm an attorney practicing law at 246 Hanover Street in Peabody. And I'm here on behalf of the uh, petitioners with respect to their application. Uh, this is a uh, continued public hearing. And as the board uh, knows, our original proposal called for uh, four new lots to be created behind the dwellings at 299, 301, and uh, 303 Lowell Street. Uh, each of those lots was designed to hold a uh, two-family dwelling. Uh, two of those lots were designed to uh, be accessed from a common driveway on the left side of the dwelling at 303 Lowell Street, and the other two lots would be accessed from a common driveway uh, between the dwellings at 299 and uh, 301 Lowell Street. Uh, at the original uh, public hearing, we were asked by the board if we could uh, more or less reduce the number of the proposed lots uh, because the uh, proposal appeared to be uh, too dense for the area. Uh, as a result, uh, the petitioners did have their surveyor uh, prepare some revised uh, plans. Uh, Mr. Mello prepared uh, two different uh, site plans showing two different proposals, and I believe those plans are before the board this evening. Uh, one plan shows only uh, two lots that are being proposed and they'd be behind the existing dwellings at 301 and uh, 303 Lowell Street. Uh, obviously, these lots are shown as lots one and two. Uh, they would contain two family dwellings, and uh, those dwellings would be accessed solely from a common driveway on the uh, left side of the uh, home at uh, 303 Lowell Street. Uh, this particular design doesn't incorporate any of the land or the property that's situated at uh, 299 Lowell Street. And that was done on purpose in order to keep the proposed dwellings as far away as possible from our abutters on uh, Carolitz Road. Uh, in addition, 
Uh, that proposal doesn't require any additional uh, zoning relief as set forth in our application. Uh, in fact, it uh, contains uh, less zoning relief uh, since the three existing dwellings will stay in conformance to our uh, zoning ordinance. Uh, the other site plan that shows uh, three lots being proposed behind the existing dwellings again at 301 and 303 Low Street. Uh, these lots are obviously shown as lots one, two, and three. And in order to uh, further reduce the density impact, uh, the petitioners would accept the restriction that the dwellings on these lots uh, be restricted to single family dwellings. Uh, as you can see on that plan, uh, lots one and two would be accessed from a common driveway, again on the left side of the dwelling at 303 Low Street. And lot three would be accessed from a driveway on the right side of the property at 301 Low Street. And this, two, uh, this design also does not incorporate any of the land or the property at uh, 299 Low Street. Again, it was designed for the same purpose as the two lots, to keep the dwellings as far away as possible from our uh, abutters on uh, Carolitz Road. And basically, we've submitted these two different site plans uh, in the hope that either proposal may be acceptable uh, to the board uh, and to our abutters in lieu of having to perform a definitive subdivision. I do have Mr. Goulis and our surveyor, Mr. Mello, here with us this evening, and uh, together we'll try to answer any questions that the board or the public may have. Thank you. Anybody in the audience to speak in favor? Anybody in the audience to speak in opposition? If you do, you can come right up to the podium. Ms. Attorney Bonsalitas will let you in. Always. And just state your name and address for the record. Good evening. My name is Bob Costa. I live at 305 Lowell Street, which is on the left side of those plans. Um, so I recently viewed the plans just a minute ago and notice that not much has changed other than the number of units that was originally proposed. So my concerns are the proximity to my property line, the fact that they will be using the existing driveway, which I'm concerned about snow removal, that snow being pushed up against my fence, which is on the property line, straddling uh, 303 and 305. The other concerns are in this neighborhood, in that area, the conservation land towards the back, and all runoff, Lowell Street being higher, runs to the back of that um, conservation land. So I'm concerned about digging, elevation changes, um, any additional flooding towards my property line or any of the other neighbors. Uh, I'm not concerned about traffic on Lowell Street because we all know Lowell Street is what it is. It's not gonna change anything. Um, I see this neighborhood behind the existing neighborhoods being an issue. I'm also concerned about property, um, property cost, property value going down. I spent a lot of money in my house to get it to where it is now, and I'm not looking for a neighborhood behind the neighborhood. Thank you. Anybody else to speak in opposition? Tammy Getter, I'm at 7B Corellitz Road. I am at the end of Corellitz Road. And as Mr. Costas 
talked about. Runoff, uh, my property is lower than the Gulas's property. We do already experience backyard flooding, being next to the dried up Proctor Brook area. When there was building that happened next to me on Corellitz Road where there was one house that was demolished and two built in, we've experienced more flooding in the backyard and in the basement for which we had to install two sump pumps. So I do feel that if foundations are going to be put in within however many feet of the pond that I back up to, that I will have a hardship of water in the basement. And no one can really guarantee me that that couldn't happen. So that's, and where, when the snow removal happens, if it can't go out to Lowell Street and it can't go out to the neighbors' homes, it's going to go back to the conservation area. Thank you. Anybody else to speak in opposition? Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Brian Cassidy. I'm an attorney with offices at 265 Newbury Street here in Peabody. And I'm here this evening representing Sheila LaPearl and Barbara Emerald of 295 Lowell Street. Uh, you may recall last December, we submitted a uh, memo to the uh, board uh, that was fairly extensive, and I went through that at that time, and I don't intend to do that this evening. Uh, my concern is that there are currently three plans before the board. The plan that was filed in December, uh, the plan that has the three lots on, uh, shown on uh, behind 301 and 303, and the plan that shows two lots between 301 and 303 Lowell Street. I, I think what needs to be clear is that the applicant needs to make a choice of what, if any of those plans they want the board to vote on. Uh, my client has feelings about all three of them. Uh, one is less objectionable in the sense that it's further away from their property. Um, they all have some of the, pretty much the same issues that we raised back in December, but I think it has to be clear from the applicant's position what plan they are asking the board to consider and vote on this evening. Um, my name is Camille Matabello. I live at 7A Carolitz Road in Peabody. Our property, which is a duplex, Tammy Gitter and I, um, faces the back of the pond. And I object to this project mainly because of a flooding issue. Um, we have had flooding several times um, over the years, of which we've had to put a sump pump in um, each of our dwellings. Um, due to the flooding. Um, so therefore I oppose this project because um, any drilling and whatever into the ground I feel is just going to make the flooding much worse for us. Okay, thank you. Anybody else in the audience to speak in opposition? Which plan is it, Jack? I mean, Ethan. I'm sorry. You can call me anything you want. Wow. Don't worry about it. Uh, the reason we submitted the two different site plans uh, was one so that the neighbors could review both and determine if one would be more acceptable than the other, the same for the board. Uh, one is showing only two lots. That would be two families. I think that would probably be the, the least. So, so, but in reality, it's not and never has been our decision. We would. As far as what are you actually presenting to us? Two lots, three lots? I would go with the two lots. Thank you. You're more than welcome. It's two lots. 
I have uh, Mr. Mello, though, that can walk through any drainage issues because if this proposal does move forward, we do have to appear before the Conservation Commission for an order of conditions in which we'll, we'll have to do a, a drainage impact study that's uh, reviewed by and, the Department and, and of Public and Services. Do you realize that we have a memorandum stating that the revised plan submitted tonight is still missing? the deline delineation associated with B-Series wetland flags. Yes, I, I, yeah, I, I spoke okay. with Lucia about that. All and right. That property is no longer part of our proposal, but I'll let Chris go through that. You do this often, Chris? No. <laughs> I was hoping Rick Salvo was going to be up So anyway, good evening. I know the microphone's back there. I'm Chris Mello for Eastern Land Survey, and I'm going to try to, uh, I know that nobody else can see that but the board. I think you can take that. I'm going to do that. Uh, uh, as uh, Mr. Bond's leader said, uh, we had submitted uh, two plans uh, to the board and to the uh, abutters and the representatives. Uh, as alternatives to the uh, four-unit plan that we had previously uh, submitted. And uh, just to put uh, Ms. Del Negro's uh, issue to bed, uh, there was a B-series flag that was an isolated wetland that didn't show up on some of these plans, but we understand is a PBD jurisdictional wetland, not a state one, that we have to deal with at the uh, DEP and her commission, and we will do so. And I did submit a plan to her showing that. So no problem there, doesn't affect this. Uh, what we had initially uh, proposed was four uh, lots uh, in the rear of this property, and uh, we were back here today, and we have uh, created two new plans that show a two and a three lot subdivision on the properties uh, to the left that do not include, and I'll, I'm sorry if I don't have the, Ethan, 299, 301, 303? Yes. That do not include the property at 299. They, they are not necessary for this uh, application, but the uh, proposal before you for the uh, other two lots indicate a uh, two and a three lot subdivision which do not I'll ask any more relief other than what was advertised for. Essentially, we're still looking for a frontage and lot width only. We uh, comply with both of those plans with lot area, density, uh, front yard, side yard, setback, and coverage. And uh, both of those plans would involve going to the Conservation Commission uh, because there's work in the buffer zone so we would need uh, an order of conditions based on notice of intent that we would file and we would deal with uh, all of the utilities, sewer water drainage uh, with them. So that what you have before you, uh, as Ethan said, are uh, the two alternative plans that I was asked to prepare. Uh, I think that uh, the issues uh, are the same from my standpoint, from the uh, zoning standpoint, we're only looking for the frontage and lot width. Uh, side yard, rear yard, front yard, density, lot width, minimum lot depth, minimum lot width are all the, uh, complied with. So I'd be happy to answer any questions on that or the zoning or any of the utilities uh, that anybody may have because I think that uh, they can all be accomplished because the land does slope uh, for what it's worth from Lowell Street towards the rear we would capture uh, any stormwater runoff increase from either of these because we have to go through the uh, Conservation Commission and stormwater management for those houses with uh, some stormwater uh, management, either infiltration systems or some type of ponding that would be in the rear of the houses. The water in the sewer would come from Lowell Street. Uh, the driveways would come from Lowell Street. And uh, the impact would be uh, for whichever units uh, were chosen, uh, one driveway or two, as opposed to uh, some alternatives that uh, we've 
designed and discussed, which would be uh, a roadway, um, you know, and I'm not sure I want to go into that because I know that's what's before you, so I won't. I'd be happy to answer any questions on the zoning, the utilities, the density, or anything else. Mr. Osborne. Good, Barry. How are you? you you're looking pensive over there. Thank you. By all means. Application from the petitioner. And um, I did listen very intently to the opening of this meeting from, by our chairman, chairperson, excuse me. Um, so I was looking at the application and I did see that this is an option other than a, defin a definitive subdivision. Absolutely. Okay. So my question is, and I, I certainly understand 40, 40A, is if this was to be a definitive subdivision, um, were you, or maybe Nathan can help me, involved with um, what it would look like if it was going to be a definitive, a definitive subdivision? Certainly. How many units? Yeah, absolutely. Would? Uh, currently, the uh, two lot, uh, I'm sorry, the two projects before you uh, encompass two of the properties, uh, not Mr. Goulis's house itself. As you can see, we've uh, bifurcated that and taken that out. That's no longer necessary for the two of the three lot subdivision. He would retain his property. It would not be involved in this. It would only be the two houses to the left. If we were to go for a definitive subdivision, we would come through the middle of the property through the uh, center house and build a, sub, uh, a definitive subdivision, a 50-foot road with a 100-foot cul-de-sac in conformance with the rules and regulations of uh, the PUD Planning Board that would move that center house to one of the lots. And I'm sorry I don't have the number with me, but it would create five or six, Ethan? I think it was six new lots. Six new lots, maybe, plus the house and it would create uh, a stormwater management pond for that roadway. The uh, runoff would be greater because we would have more houses, more roofs, more driveways, and the roadway to contend with. But we do have sufficient uh, land to uh, contend with that and to uh, build a facility of that manner. The uh, sewer and water would come from Lowell Street. The traffic would come from Lowell Street. I'm sorry, the uh, vehicular traffic. And it would be a longer process uh, for the applicant. But I believe that we could do that uh, in, a, in a manner that would be approvable, in my experience, with the PPD Planning Board. And thank you. Um, and if you would cut, would you, what would you have to Demo part of 301 in order to make the road? I'm not, I'm sorry. I gotta, I gotta see which one 301 is. It's right in the middle. No, no I'm sorry. I would not demo 301. We would, uh, we would move 301. We'll pick it up and we'll put it on one of the lots. We, we feel that the house is uh, admirable, salvageable, and movable. And we will put it on the lot probably at the head of the cul de sac. We're not going to lose that one. No, I was going to say, it's a nice house. That's a beautiful home. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Comments? Just a clarification. So uh, the plan that they picked is the two? Just to answer any questions that the board may have. I mean, I guess I'll just just go on kind of seconding uh, Barry's position here that it, it looks like there is a subdivision, a definitive subdivision available here, um, even though it would essentially put more, potentially more lots or more houses on this here. Um, it's just just my thought that if we, we have this in place for a reason, it, you know, it, it might keep more in character with the neighborhood to do some kind of definitive subdivision as opposed to trying to cram a couple houses in the back. Um, we appreciate that you've scaled it back, obviously, from the initial one, but um, I just, that's just my thoughts, that if we mm -hmm. have those rules in place to allow you to subdivide, 
I think that might be the approach, at least that I, I see as the best possible approach for everybody. That is an alternate approach. Yeah. We picked this one because we wanted to pick the one that was going to be the least disruptive to the era, cause the least amount of earth removal, uh, construction work, uh, and number of dwellings. We just kind of figured a, a lesser of two evils. Motion to close the public hearing. I'll second. And a motion to approve the plan that has the two lots in the rear. Sure, I'll second that motion. Call vote. Yes. No. Yes. Kevin? Yes. Steven? No. Priya? No. Nope. Three application of James and Susie and Hughes. Notice is hereby given that the Board of Appeals, City of Peabody, will hold a public hearing on Monday, April 23rd, 7 p.m., Wigan Auditorium, City Hall, 24 Lowell Street, in Peabody, on the application of Suzanne and James Hughes, 7 Goodridge Street, Peabody, for a variance from the provision of the Zoning Ordinance 2017, as amended Section 72, as it applies to the premise known as 7 Goodridge Street, Map 103, Lot 64A, Peabody. Petitioner seeks a variance for a proposed addition. Relief is needed to the rear yard where 12.5 plus or minus feet are proposed and 35 feet are required. This property is located in an R1 zoning district. The application and plot plan are available for review at the City Clerk and Board of Appeals Office, City Hall, and will be available at the time of public hearing. Good evening. My name is Jim Hughes. I live at 7 Goodrich Street. We were, we'd like to put an addition to expand a kitchen and replace an existing deck in the house. The room dimensions of the addition would be 14 by 26. The new deck would be a smaller deck at 12 by 16. Um, we did receive a variance for the same project in November of 16, but we never moved forward with the work. You just let the variance lapse? We did. Chair, did we approve that? Yes, you did. Thank you. Through the chair. Uh, I know we already approved this once. It sounds like a year ago, but just to make sure we have it clear this time for the record. Uh, what is going to be going in that proposed addition? It is a kitchen. It's an expanded kitchen in a small seating area. Okay, so it's not a secondary living it area? It is not. And is the roof line with the proposed addition going to be in line with the existing uh, it structure? It would be the, the, the same slanted roof, the same look. Those are my only questions. Anybody in the audience to speak in favor? Anybody in the audience to speak in opposition? Motion to close the public hearing. Okay. Second. Good. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. I'm sorry. I don't say that. I'll second one of those. <laughs> Call vote on this one also. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Number four, Gaetano Federa. Notice is hereby given that the Board of Appeals, City of Peabody, will hold a public hearing on Monday, April 23rd, 7 p.m. at the Wigan Auditorium, City Hall, 24 Lowell Street, Peabody, on the application of Gaetano Federa, 
3 Birch Street Peabody for a variance from the provision of the Zoning Ordinance 2017 as amended Section 7-2 as it applies to the premise known as 3 Birch Street, Map 14, Lot 76 Peabody. Petitioner seeks a variance for a proposed deck. The relief is needed lot coverage where 27% is proposed and 25% is required. The property is located in R1 Zoning District. The application and plot plan are available for review at the City Clerk and Board of Appeals Office, City Hall, and will be available at the time of public hearing. Good evening. My name is Gaetano Federa. I currently live at 70 Summer Street, Stoneham. I'm here tonight to ask um, that the board would grant me permission to build this deck, which is um, 16 by 15 in the rear of my new addition. So, you came before us uh, not too long ago for another variance, is that correct? Yes. And that was a quite a large variance that we issued it, you. It, it was for a three-car garage. And now you're coming for a deck. And the hardship is... Particularly see any remotely small hardship here at all. E tiny one. Through the chair, I don't. I don't see anything on this on this drawing for a deck. Right. This is the mm -hmm. same. On the. Is there, a, oh, is there a deck on this? In the back. Yes. Through, through the chair, it does, the, the plan here says it's a 14 by 16 deck. Oh, 14. I thought I heard you say 15. Oh, sorry, I meant 14. It is four times? Yes. This is correct? Okay. And has construction begun on the variance that we granted on that three car garage? Oh yeah, it's 80% uh, completed. Okay. Have you started construction on this uh, Proposed deck? Absolutely not. <laughs> Through the chair. I don't know if you are aware, it, it seems like the, the building inspector says that the reason why you need a variance is because you're going to be covering too much of your lot. You're supposed to only have 25% of the lot covered and this deck would put you at 27%. Have you looked at downsizing your deck and where, where you wouldn't need a variance? Like would a 14 by 14 deck fall within the 25%? Do you know the numbers? I mean, we don't have the square footage numbers in front of us to know exactly well, what you I would can need. Downsize the excuse, I can downsize the deck. That, that would be my suggestion because yeah. uh, right now, I mean, I hate to be blunt, but you're pushing your luck here. You know. Um, this is excuse me. This will be the last time I'm coming up. Well, I'm, I, I'm, I'm ready to. Uh, I want to move in there as soon as possible. I, I, my honest yeah. suggestion is narrow it down. I, I this, there's no hardship here. I, I, I could not approve this myself. I'm only one vote for what I have. What I see in front of me. To narrow it down, uh, you you could you don't even need to come before us. No, again. no. If to narrow it down, I have to eliminate it. I, I, I have no comment on that. I, I mean, I can eliminate. I mean, excuse me. I can um, narrow it down to like ten by twelve, but it's still going to put me over the um, lot usage. The numbers are actually, uh, now that I look at the top left of the plan, we can do the math too, but.
trying to see if there's a way to shrink it. Just hoping somebody would be quicker at that than me. Anybody in the audience to speak in favor? Anybody to speak in opposition? Any other comments, comments or questions by the board, from the board? Anybody still trying to do the math? I don't think it matters. Motion to close the public hearing. Second. Motion to approve. Roll call vote, please. I need a second. Oh, I need a second. Second. There you go. Dan? No. Barry? No. Kevin? Yes. Steven? No. Francis? No. Nope. That's okay. Thank you. Number five. Rebel Restaurants. Hello. Notice is hereby given that the Board of Appeals, City of Peabody, will hold a public hearing on Monday, April 23rd, 7 p.m., Wigan Auditorium, City Hall, 24 Lowell Street, Peabody, on the application of Tony C's, Rebel Restaurants, 250 Northern Ave, Boston, for a variance from the provisions of the Zoning Ordinance 2011 as amended, Section 1152, as it applies to the premise known as 210 Andover Street, Map 51, Lot 8, Peabody. Petitioner seeks a variance to allow relief from proposed wall sign area of 206 plus or minus square feet rather than 75 square feet permitted. The property is located in a BR zoning district. The application and plot plan are available for review at the City Clerk and Board of Appeals Office, City Hall, and will be available at the time of public hearing. Hello, my name is Joseph Correa, Boston Building Reps. Uh, we're the sign manufacturer for Rebels Restaurants. And um, the first thing I'd like to mention is that the square footage that the building inspector had noted was 200 and square, 206 square feet. And we're actually looking for only 132 square feet. Um, I don't know where that. One more time. Yes. That. The. Um, Building inspector in his notice said that the, we were um, proposing 206 square feet of signage when it's only actually 132 square feet. Um, I just have a I question. You, so, yeah, I think you might when, when did that change? Pardon me? When did that change? Um, it changed after. Well, we submitted the the um, the documents and it said 132 square feet on it. I don't know where he got that number. I don't know if his math or was wrong or if it was a typo, but um, I have it right here. I think it's in your drawing. Do you have the drawings there? So I, I, I threw the chair. If you look at the, a, the picture, yeah, yeah, it the sign itself is much smaller than the square that it takes to, to, to yep. get the whole thing in. Yeah. So um, we got approvals from Simon Mall. Um, they approved the drawings and the increase in size. And uh, I have a letter here that um, is the agreement that they, they uh, approved it, obviously with the approval of the variance. We'll have our secretary read it into the record. Uh, dear Abby, the signed drawings have been reviewed and are approved as noted. One set of plans marked with review comments is enclosed for your records. Contact the appropriate landlord rep at the property to review check-in procedures and all, all rules and regs. That's from Kristen Harris, that's the senior tenant coordinator, and this is written to Abby Bork of the Cronin Group. And, um, and again, that's uh, on the Simon letterhead. February 21st is the date of the letter. So because it's on Simon letterhead, I guess this Tony C's is going in the mall? Yes, yes it is. Could you and tell us where? The, yes, it is. And the, if you look at the sign, the characters of the letters. Um, oh, where, where, where in the mall is the on restaurant? On the back side over by Andover Street, on the back side of the mall, on the uh, northern side. To yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, that's right. That's right. It's right in the middle there. But the six characters 
Tony sees if you make the sign 75 square feet where it's only six characters, it becomes tiny. And uh, having a tiny sign on the building facade, which their owners are trying to you know, make this restaurant a success in a mall, um, we felt that this not only fit the, fit the space very well, but I think it's a, it looks really good on the space, and uh, you're, we're hoping that people will be able to see it from Route 114. Uh, it's a sort of a tough spot to actually see where it's on the backside, so we felt that the exposure with the sign is really important, especially for the scale of the restaurant. It's being lit how? Pardon me? Lit. Yes, it's back lit. Yes. Yeah, it's lit. Yep, the face is lit. It's got three-inch returns. Um, stainless steel painted that are black, and the faces are um, blue, uh, blue with a white halo lit LED. Through the chair, what will be the hours? I, I, I assume I know the answer, but what will be the hours of uh, the sign being lit? Um, I think it's uh, Abby. What is the, the hours that will be on? 11 to 1 hours of operation. From, so from 7 to 11? 11 to 1. Oh, 11 to 1 a.m. 11 p.m. to 1. That's the hours of operation. So we'll have it lit. Yes. Yeah, we'll let it in the morning and it'll go right, right to 11 at night. 11, 1 at night, excuse me, 1 o'clock. It's not going to flash, is it? Say again? It's not going to be a, one of those flashes. Oh, no, 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 no. It's, um, no, it's... The sign is very tasteful. It goes with the brand. Um, they're trying to bring Tony C's back into the, you know, into the limelight, if you will. It's been, it's been received very well in other communities. You don't want to know. Okay. Through this again. It looks like we have two separate. Uh, signs. We have the one that says Tony C's spelled out. Yes. And then the other little um, circular. Yeah, that's a that's a small blade sign that runs perpendicular to the walkway. But I think that the only one that we that was specified for the variance was this this wall okay. sign. Yeah. yeah. This, I, it was made part of the application. Yeah. Just to we, see it where was just, that fit. Yeah. The comments by the board, questions, anybody in the audience to speak in favor, anybody in the audience to speak in opposition? Motion to close. Second. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call vote. Dan? Yes. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Notice is hereby given that the Board of Appeals, City of Peabody, will hold a public hearing on Monday, April 23rd, 7 p.m., Wigan Auditorium, City Hall, 24 Lowell Street, Peabody, on the application of Charles E. Holden, 91 Linfield Street, Peabody, for a variance from the provision of the Zoning Ordinance 2017, as amended Section 7-2, as it applies to the premise known as 91 Linfield Street, Map 101, Lot 29, Peabody. Petitioner seeks a variance for a proposed addition. Relief is needed on the right side yard where seven feet are proposed and 25 feet are required. Properties located in a BN zoning district, the application and plot plan are available for review at the City Clerk and Board of Appeals Office City Hall and will be available at the time of public hearing. Good evening, my name is Charles Martins. Uh, apologize if I'm a little cold. I'm an attorney on behalf of the petitioner. My office is 81 Main Street in Peabody. Um, I'm here on an appeal from Building Commissioner uh, regarding a letter of March 23rd, 2017. Um, we're seeking a variance in which we're requesting um, a seven foot right side setback rather than the required 25 feet. Uh, this is a continuation of a project that was, we started, Holden Oil started in 2014. Um, Back in 2014, I was before City Council, and we actually purchased the old Gagnon building in the back, and we moved the, the business services of Holden Oil back into that new building, which is 91 Rear, uh, Linfield Street. Uh, at the time, 
the existing building that's there that we're proposing to uh, change uh, has been built, uh, was originally built in 1924. Uh, it has been uh, used by Holden Oil for odd uh, various pur business purposes, including uh, what it is currently, which is a gas station. Uh, the, the public, the services, the business side is no longer there, so it's been vacant. A majority of the building has been vacant since uh, 2015 when we hold an oil moved to the rear. Um, we are proposing the current building is a two-story building with a square footage of approximately about the same as we're proposing now. We're, f we're pancaking that. And we're moving, we're attempting to move the building um, to the right side, allowing more parking spaces to be on the left side. The gas station itself, the pumps, will not be changed. Um, we actually believe the traffic flow will focus more on the left side. And uh, in addition to that, the, the, the existing footprint of the building that's there now actually causes um, some uh, problems in terms of the trucks going, the diesel trucks in the back. By, with this new building, there'll be actually the egress and, um, of those trucks will be better. The abutter, the direct abutter is 87 Linfield Street Peabody, um, currently South Peabody Liquors, and the principal of that building is also Charles Holden. Um, the, um, we believe this will allow us to meet our bus the business needs for that building. Um, in terms of business purposes, a two-story building doesn't work in terms of accessibility, um, and, and it, that is one of the primary purposes to make it just a one-story building. I have the principal, Mr. Holden, here, and his um, designer, engineer, Frank Montero, to answer any questions you may have. Through the chair. Uh, just, just one question I have that kind of stands out is, since the building is being shifted over closer to South Peabody Liquors, um, it, always they have those parking spots on that side at the diagonal angle. I see arrows here pointing towards the back of the property saying stop. Are we propose? Are you proposing that that's going to become essentially a one-way, so people won't be making that weird back up, you turn and pull out again? Yes, the traffic would flow better if it was going one direction. Um, the, the parking spaces against, uh, my name's Charles Holden. I live at 99 Linfield Street. I'm also the abutter on the other side of this property. Um, so the, um, the traffic will flow better going straight through. We have an issue sometimes with two-way traffic. Also, the parking spaces that are being used against the existing gas station building are primarily our employees parking there, so it won't affect affect our tenant in the building at the at the liquor store but that it, we also eliminated the jet out on the back of that building and we angled it allowing the traffic to flow better um, and that would you know that would alleviate a lot of traffic issues in our backyard that we have now okay. and you'll clearly mark that that is a, a one way with arrows in the ground or something yes okay The questions or comments by the board? Mr. Garabiti, and you're quiet tonight. <laughs> Is there anybody in the audience to speak in favor? In opposition? Second. Again. Roll call vote, please. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. I did fail to recognize our alternate in second alternate tonight in, that is present. Michael Garabedian, welcome. Uh, 
Go ahead, Stephen. Uh, just for the record, the next uh, petition, I believe, or application, I believe it's number seven on the list for 195 A Bartholomew Street. I have to recuse myself because I have two family members who are direct abutters. Okay, number seven. So Stephen's out. Who's who's voting? Who's our first? Julie. Julie. Okay. Julie, you're going to vote on this one, dear. <laughs> Notice is hereby given that the Board of Appeals of the City of Peabody will hold a public hearing on Monday, April 23rd, 2018, 7 p.m. Wigan Auditorium, City Hall, 24 Lowell Street, Peabody, on the application of James Gustin, 195A Bartholomew, Bartholomew Street, Peabody, Mass., for variance from the provision of the Zoning Ordinance 2017 as amended Section 72, as it applies to the premise known as 195A Bartholomew Street, Map 106, Lot 39, F, Peabody. Petitioner seeks a variance for a proposed addition. Relief is needed on the right side yard where nine feet are proposed and 20 feet are required. In the front yard where 18 feet are proposed and 25 feet are required. This property is located in R1 zoning district. The application and plot plan are available for review at the city clerk and board of appeals office city hall and will be available at the time of public hearing. Okay, yes, good evening. Uh, my name is James Gustin and I live at 195A Bartholomew Street and I am requesting uh, a variance for an addition uh, on the right side of my home. Uh, the addition will be 20 feet, 23 feet by 23 feet, uh, and it will be used for an in-law apartment for my aging uh, mother-in-law and father-in-law. Um, they, uh, they both reside currently in Naples, Florida, and uh, have experienced some uh, recent health issues over the last couple of years. So, oh, do you want to do it? Through the chair, if I could. Um, the fact that you're making this an in-law apartment, it actually would fall into the city council as a family accessory living area as opposed to, um, we can't, you would have to get approval from the city council for a filer before you can build an uh, in-law apartment. And that, that's not a bad thing, don't, don't let that scare you. I mean, if this is what you really want, you want, the kitchen, the bedroom, the bathroom, the family room, the All whole, one level. the whole. Correct. For age, has, aging then parents. You, then you have to apply for a, what they call a fala. Okay. When I went to City Hall initially, I, I explained the, the purpose. They didn't say anything about it. Well, maybe, maybe you hit somebody on a busy day. Okay. So is there another process I have to go through to? Through the chair. There is another process. Uh, what I've never been clear on is the order in which you need to do this because we could vote on the variance tonight and make it subject to it being yeah. approved by the city council he's, and then i think i mean this was noticed properly even if he, he gets a file he's going to have to come back for relief so exactly. exactly so i think we right. could we, conditional that you get approval for a file from the city council is that a, yeah that's fine but remember if we approve this tonight you can't build you still have to get approval for a file Right, and, then the, and there is, even when you get your permit, there is an annual inspection every year mm -hmm. that you have to pay for to basically keep it current. Okay. Um, so that's just, you know, again, don't want to put the car before the horse. We still have to vote on it. But I imagine if we do vote on it tonight, it would be, and we were to approve it, it will be subject to that condition. Okay. I just wanted to be clear on the purpose, the purpose for the addition. And you had mentioned hardships, and I, I think this clearly is a hardship uh, right. you know, and, due and, to the and age I, of my, And I my appreciate that. So just know... If it, if it goes through tonight and you're not working tomorrow, go see the building commissioner or the building inspector tomorrow. And, you know, the sooner the better. Okay. Because then you can get on the city council schedule. Okay. Correct? Okay. Anybody in the audience to speak in favor? In opposition. Okay. In favor or opposition? In favor. So uh, my name is Steve Shea. I live at 197 Bartholomew, right next door. And I know this is something they talked about a couple of years ago, and I th actually thought it got approved then. It just didn't get built. But it, it was just one of those things that they've been great th neighbors. They've been going through doing stuff, and I, and I completely, I have a 91-year-old mother-in-law. I completely get where they're going with this and just wanted to speak in favor. You did discuss this with, you knew about this before you came here tonight? I got the notice in the mail, yep. But, I mean, you, you know what he was doing. Like, you talked about it. Like your good neighbors. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 
Uh, also, uh, I've spoken to the other abutters of, of the property, particularly uh, the Zaninos, which live uh, directly to my left, which would have the biggest impact. Uh, they had no opposition to it. Um, they understood we were trying to do this a few years ago, but we just, we just never followed through with it. I believe it was in 2010 we went through the same process, had the variance approved, but we never, we never did the construction. Uh, so we heard in favor. Opposition? Anybody in opposition? Hearing none? Okay. Move to close the public hearing. Second. Move to approve conditional to the um, granting of a follow from the City Council. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? You're up. Questions, please contact uh, Mrs. McGrath or the building inspector. There you go. She's going to give you her card. Thank you. Number eight. Notice is hereby given that the Board of Appeals, City of Peabody, will hold a public hearing on Monday, April 23rd, 7 p.m., Wigan Auditorium, City Hall, 24 Lowell Street, Peabody, on the application of Judith Dorville, St. Fort, 10 Fairview Ave, Peabody, Massachusetts, for a variance from the provisions of the Zoning Ordinance 2017, as amended Section 72, as it applies to the premises known as 10 Fairview Ave, Map 120, Lot 173, Peabody. The petitioners seek a variance to allow a proposed addition and need relief to the left side yard of 6.2 plus or minus feet instead of the 15 feet required. The property is located in an R1A zoning district. The application and plot plan are available for review at the City Clerk and Board of Appeals Office City Hall and will be available at the time of public hearing. Good evening. My name is Judith Dorville St. Fort and I live at 10 Fairview Avenue in PVD. And the reason I'm here today is um, for the variance to place an addition um, to my house. Through the chair. <coughs> it looks like you have a two-story house. Is this going to be a two-story addition? Yes, it's going to be a two-story. The house is very small. Mm -hmm. So I don't have any attic, and I only have one bathroom. And right now I have a 10-year-old, and my daughter is going to be eight next week. So they're using the bathroom like crazy and close it for privacy. So it's kind of hard. So that's why I'm planning to do the addition. I was just wondering if you, if you moved this over, so no matter, even if you moved it over to the other side, you'd still need a variance. So that, right. Mm -hmm. And my neighbors, some of them I spoke to, they approve and I have, some of them give me verbal, but one of them give me the letter. This uh, letter is dated April 22nd to the ZBA regarding the legal notice variance. We, the abutters to the property at 10 Fairview Ave, are not going to oppose the request for a variance to the zoning ordinance, which will allow the proposed addition and the change to the property. And it's signed by Frank and Barbara Pelizaro at 12 Fairview Ave, Peabody. Questions, concerns, comments? Anybody in the audience to speak in favor? Anybody in the audience to speak in opposition? This, this, do we keep this? Do you keep this? Okay. Roll call vote. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. On this evening.
Notice is hereby given that the Board of Appeals of the City of Peabody will hold a public hearing on Monday, April 23rd, 2018, 7 p.m., Wigan Auditorium, City Hall 24, Lowell Street, Peabody, on the application of Rudolfo Florencio, 10 and a half Winter Street, Peabody, care of Attorney Jack Kelty, for a variance from the provision to the Zoning Ordinance 2017 as amended Section 72, as it applies to the premises known as 10 and a half Winter Street, Map 85, Lot 126, Peabody. The petition to seek a variance to construct a proposed two-family dwelling and need relief to the following. Proposed area of 3810 plus or minus square feet where 34,500 square feet are allowed. Proposed frontage of 37 plus or minus feet with 75 feet are required. Proposed lot width of 36 plus or minus feet where 56.25 feet are allowed. Proposed side yard of four plus or minus where 15 feet are required. Proposed rear yard of 27 plus or minus feet where 35 feet are required. Proposed lot coverage of 36 plus or minus percentage where 35% is allowed. Proposed minimum buildable lot width of seven plus or minus feet where 25 feet are required. Proposed driveway width of 10 plus or minus feet where 20 feet are required. It must also adhere to section 10 of the provisions of the zoning ordinance, specifically landscaping. This property is located in R4 zoning district. The application and plot plan are available for review at the city clerk, board of appeals office in city hall, at city hall and will be available at the time of public hearing. Thank you, members of the Board of Appeals. My name is John Kelty. I'm an attorney. I have offices at 40 Lowell Street in Peabody, Massachusetts. And I appear this evening on behalf of, that's my wife. <laughs> she loves that. Sorry, I can't talk right now. <clears throat> um, but I appear on behalf of uh, Rudolfo Florencio, who has entered into an agreement for the purchase of this property, which is a 3,810 square foot lot located in an R4 uh, zoning district. We are proposing to construct uh, a two family. Uh, we are proposing that we would retain the same, uh, if you look closely at the plan, you'll see that there are dotted lines. Uh, which indicate where the former building location was. So we're holding that same four foot side yard that has uh, existed, uh, had existed uh, when the property was uh, developed. It was knocked down in 1992. It was a three family home at that time. I believe that the uh, zoning probably was not R4, uh, but it was a multifamily uh, zoning district. Uh, Steve Callis, who had purchased the property, he owns a uh, building uh, across the street. He had hoped to use it uh, for parking, accessory to uh, his building, uh, and or for storage of uh, commercial, um, uh, commercial vehicles and commercial uh, equipment. Um, that was not allowed in the R4 zoning district, uh, so that was discontinued. And uh, he has put the property on the market, and my client, Mr. Florencio, is hopeful of purchasing it. We have proposed, rather than the three family that was formerly there, we have proposed a uh, two family, uh, and we're proposing to keep uh, all of our parking uh, within, our, uh, within our property. We're proposing garages. Uh, beneath, and uh, there are two parking spaces that would, uh, are out to the rear of the premises, and we would access uh, those through the um, right of way, um, which is uh, shared by uh, our neighbors at number 10, and this piece of property is uh, number 10 and a half. Uh, the um, commercial use of the property being impossible. Uh, we do know that uh, we have neighbors who uh, have a commercial use to the property uh, uh, to our right that would like to see us move off of uh, the side yard. We would ask the board to note that their side yard is approximately one foot, one and a half foot, even inches, and we're proposing the same side yard that existed uh, for all those many years prior to 1992. We have provided a requisite number of spaces. Uh, we will have off-street parking, and uh, we're asking uh, for the variance to allow for a two-family uh, to be developed in an R4 zoning district. Correct me if I'm wrong, but 
Didn't this come before us a few years ago? No, I think that's the one up on the corner. Um, that was like a four or six unit. This has no structure on it right now at all. I think the one you're referring to, I think I may have been here with it. And uh, I think uh, Attorney Papa Nicholas was here with it. But that's on the corner of uh, uh, Winter and Park, is it? Is this near a uh, auto body shop? Pardon? Is this near an auto body shop? Yes, immediately adjacent. Right. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I would. I thought that this came before us a few years ago and was denied. Um, so I didn't do it. I, I didn't bring it. So. Jack? So I'm reading specific grounds for hardship. The current owner was intending to use the lot for commercial use but was not allowed to do so. Can you explain that? Uh, that was at the time that uh, Mr. Callis had, uh, had acquired the property. He was hopeful that he could use it commercially. However, the property turned out to be zoned R4, residential only. So he This says the current owner. Current owner is Steve Callis. My client uh, is uh, Rodolfo Florencio, who has uh, offered to purchase the property from Mr. Callis. Has not done so as of tonight. But Has not purchased it yet. No. It, uh, that purchase and sale agreement is uh, contingent upon trying to obtain a use from uh, this board uh, that we think is reasonable, uh, given the fact that uh, you know the <clears throat> the R four zoning district requires minimum of thirty thousand square feet plus seven fifty square feet per bedroom. So that's why we called out that. So, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't this already a very congested area? It and is. And where, where was, I, w I went by a few times, wasn't there uh, at some point, I, I had to go a while ago also, didn't they store cars somewhere? I mean, isn't this, they're there now, right? They're there now. And quite a lot of I, variance issues here, don't you think? I what? mean, this is really a lot. It is a lot. Um, in as much, though, as it doesn't seem to be uh, really at all properly zoned. For us to uh, place a 3,810 square foot uh, lot in an R4 zoning district and just doesn't make a great deal of sense. And this is also in a flood zone. Yes, it is. That's, we did place that note on the plan. And if the board were to approve uh, something to be built, then we would need to take this uh, to the Conservation Commission. That's correct. So why do I have a note saying that the current plan submitted to the ZBA does not show the FEMA flood zone? It does not clarify the elevation as it is related to the property and the associated flood zone. I did replace that plan after that had come out. So down in the lower left hand corner is Locus is in an, uh, in a AE 100 year flood zone. The chair. So this, this plan was dated. Just saw the date a minute ago. March, March 7, 2018. Was this placed on the plan subsequent to March 7th? Yes. Okay. And is that typical we don't, that we don't redate the plan when there's a revision made? Um, that's a good question for the surveyor. 
You, you, you also have written here, his says revised, mine says updated. Graham. Hi. Uh, Chris Mallow, Eastern Land Survey. We submitted this plan uh, to the Board of Appeals for zoning relief and uh, knowing that we had to go to the Conservation uh, Commission for uh, no other conditions because we are in the floodplain, uh, Mr. Kelty informed me that uh, the conservation uh, young lady had said that we are in the floodplain, we all agreed with that, and she said, could you please add that to the plan? And I did, and I don't think I revised the date because I didn't think the plans had been pushed through. But uh, we are in the floodplain, and uh, we hope that uh, we're able to get permission to build this, and it would be built in conformance with the uh, regulations of the PBD Conservation Commission and the Mass DEP. Thank you. Which is essentially no livable uh, space on that first floor. That's in part why we have the garages on the first floor. So the people won't get flooded, but the cars will? No, the cars will get flooded and the people won't get flooded. Attorney Kelly, is there a right of way that comes off of Winter Street? Is that just to access the back of the property, or is that accessing whatever property Jose and Diana Mendoza are on? That's that's actually serves as access uh, for both of those lots. I don't believe that the deed reflects that it's uh, access for the property that is in the in the very rear. It's uh, for the two ten and ten and a half winter. I just think that um, it's, it's a lot to ask in this small area, in a floodplain, you're, the relief you need is tremendous. I don't see a hardship, it's, but once again, I'm only one vote. in the audience to speak in favor, in opposition. Hello, good evening everyone. My name is Samir Zepai. I'm uh, the son of the Lindita Zepai, the owner of 10 Winter Street. And by, by the way, before we start this, we actually were not notified about any of this. <clears throat> okay, so hold you right there. So are you saying that the city did not notify you? Yes, we did. Oh. Only from the city. Okay. So that's different. Okay. That's that you were notified, but you were not approached by this person. No, I'm sorry. Okay, that's good. No, that's fine. Because you almost got the flirt. No, in, in no, trouble. I'm <laughs> sorry. So under the law of Chapter 40A, uh, Mr. Rodolfo hasn't approved any substantial hardships. He hasn't approved anything unique about the topography, the shape, or the soil of the conditions. He hasn't proved that his project is not that substantially detrimental to the neighborhood or me. That'll be all, thank you very much. Thank you. Short, sweet, and right to the point else in opposition? Hi, uh, my name is David Ankles. I practice law at 246 Andover Street, Peabody, and it's nice to see you. Uh, I apologize for being here in opposition. I'm usually here proposing. However, I represent uh, Mr. Derek Brown, the owner of Unit 1, which is a commercial condominium and abuts this property directly. I'm also here representing the owner of Lot 2, uh, Brett Emery. Uh, and both of these gentlemen have invested a tremendous amount of money in their businesses, wish to continue in operation where they are and hopefully prosper, expand and contribute to the economy of the city. It's not their intent to deprive Mr. Callis of the use of his lot, 
nor is it our intent to provide or deprive anybody of the uh, ability to build a single family residence for themselves. As a matter of fact, I think that if a proposal here tonight were a single family unit that was perhaps 10 feet off the side yard rather than the five feet that exists or is requested. Uh, Going off track here. Well, I think, I think, uh, I think the point is that uh, we've got 10 sardines going into a one sardine can, period. And there's no room for it. Uh, parking does not exist. Access and egress does not exist. Seven feet is not a right of way that'll service two or four cars to the rear. Everything is overloaded. Uh, as the young man stated, uh, there's no hardship here. Uh, Mr. Callis could have used this for a parking lot for his other endeavors down there. So I guess I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Anybody else in opposition? Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see you, sir. My apologies. That's okay. My name is Brett Emery, and I own one of the units, as uh, David had mentioned. Um, we're, um, we're trying our best to be open-minded. Uh, I just want to reinforce a couple of the conditions that are concerning us, which is the home being so close to our building, which concerns us with the safety of kids getting from one structure on top of our structure, because it's proposed that it only four feet away right now, and the parking issue is the big issue. Um, every, every boundary has been pressed to try to put something in here, and um, we're open to ideas, open to suggestions, but this is just not a good one to benefit any of us. And that's really all I want to reinforce. Thank you. Thank you. Did I miss anybody? Okay. Attorney Kelty. Uh, my client, uh, Rudolfo, is actually not present this evening. I've uh, spoken briefly to uh, some folks uh, from the real estate end of things. And um, I would like perhaps the opportunity to uh, continue this matter to see whether my client would consider moving the 10 feet that they've asked and doing a single family home. I would say no, but that's up to the board. He can't use his land for anything? Okay. Are you with me, Attorney Kelty? I'll make, a yet. I'll make that motion to continue. Second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, may I have a motion to accept the minutes? Motion to accept the minutes. All in favor? Second. Anything else Aye. we have to discuss? Could, oh. And matters properly before the board, could I speak to uh, the variance you granted uh, first this evening? There was a 22-foot rear yard. Uh, we don't need that. So if we would strike that, uh, and that would be fine. That might no longer yep. exist. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Uh, is there... Everybody all set here? Anything else we have to discuss? Motion, can I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Good night.